Hey Jane, uh, you're making some cyanotypes. Yeah, I started making cyanotypes at the beginning of 2018 yeah. um, because I was really interested in the actual process of producing that blue because I do a lot of work in memory and I like that sort of blurred image that you could get from making a photogram mm -hmm. with cyanotype. Quite an old process. Yeah, it is a really old process. It sort of started at, started at the late 1800s and um, believe it or not, uh, one of, a woman was one of the very first to produce some really great botanical prints back in the day. Yeah, I've seen some of those. They're exquisitely detailed. They are exquisitely detailed and I do like you can get a blurred image or you can get a really precise line image from the cyanotype. So what are we going to work with today? Um, we're going to work with a recipe that I use, but first of all I'll just go through um, mm. the different utensils that you will need to use for the process. First of all you'll need two plastic um, measuring jugs, one for each solution. You need two light sensitive um, containers because you actually need to store the actual solutions separate from each other because once they're joined together they actually um, oxidize after a couple of days so they don't have a lot of longevity but if they're kept separate they will last up to six months. Wow. Yeah you need to use um, plastic, no metal because it will actually react with the chemical so every um, thing you use needs to be plastic. Um, you need to have safety goggles and a safety mask because the chemicals can be quite um, toxic mm -hmm. so you know and you can feel yourself inhaling them which is not a good thing so um, you need uh, some plastic spoons and some plastic pegs to actually hang um, the finished works up to dry and you will need um, a timer, the chemicals, another measuring jug for your water you need to use demineralised water, um, so it's neutral when you're mixing the chemicals. And for the washout process, we use um, peroxide. Mm -hmm. um, most chemists have um, the three, well, three percent is usually at Woolies. You have to go to the chemist to get the six percent, which I find is the best because um, you just don't have to use as much. It's more economical, and we need use the vinegar for um, the first washout tray and that stops the developing as soon as um, you take it out of the light sensitive box. Okay. And yeah, the timer, oh, what you also will need yeah. is a negative. Now I use my negatives um, just on acetate so you can print those off the computer onto a photocopier. Um, you just have to make sure that the, you use Photoshop to actually invert the image because otherwise um, you it, you need to reverse the image otherwise people's faces will be totally opposite and another thing you need to remember is if you're using images with text on it when you put it down you'll have to turn it upside down okay and we're using paper today um, even though my actual um, practice I actually use um, fabric more so than paper but for today we will be using paper. Can you show me some of the things you've made before with it so I can see? Yes I can show you. Um, I use this old antique um, christening family dress so we use this one for... Oh that's exquisite. Yeah so this is our old family christening dress mm -hmm. and um, because most of my practice revolves around memory and representations of that so it is placed down on a light box and then I oh, ended up with it. Through. it wow, exposes through. It exposes through and this is what you get. So um, with photograms and using that sort of idea, you have to make sure that um, your image, uh, your matrix is sort of translucent. So the dress mm -hmm. has to be translucent and you get better captured images. Otherwise, if you use like shapes, for example, like this it will just come out like a big solid white shape. Understood. Yeah. So light has to be able to pass through. Has to be able to pass through it. Mm -hmm. um, other little samples I have here is just one that is just of a wedding picture which was this one here mm -hmm. and it came from this negative here. So you can get quite good images and a bit like Man Ray does, mm -hmm. um, with some of these images I actually move them 
in the exposure. Oh, so if you perfect. actually move it slightly within the exposure, you will get that slightly blurred image mm -hmm. even more. So I'd like to do that. And yeah, so that's it. So this can I ask you, oh, that's gorgeous. Can I ask you a question with regards to this one, just so that I understand the process here, you can, you can get a photo uh, that, or an image that you like, then you invert it, for, you know, yeah. so you, 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 you're making a negative from it. Then I can print that out as a black and white image. Yes. And then from there I put it through the photocopier with a sheet of this uh, acetate. Yes. That's and that's what, what makes my negative. That's your negative. Beautiful. Thank so, you. So, yeah, so that's basically what it is. Um, you can play with this in Photoshop mm -hmm. or even at home, like you, if you scan your photo first and then you have that scanned image, you then would put it to grayscale. Or, yes. Um, because I find coloured images, uh, they're just... Uh, they get too grainy and there's not that definition. So to play with the image in Photoshop mm -hmm. or if you're just at home, play with the colour and contrast because mm -hmm. you want to be making your darks darker, which actually prevent the light going through so that where it is dark will be white because it's blocking the light yes. and reverse. Yep. So that's basically what it is and then you can just put it out on acetate. But you probably have to do that on a photocopier. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And more so than your home computer no, no, no. or home printer because they're not that great with yeah, the acetate. Yeah, I think with the acetate it, it is designed for photocopier. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Mm. All right, so show me, uh, sh uh, show me how you're going to mix it. Okay. I, I might need to have to stand back, yeah? Yes. So when we mix, you have to first make sure that you put on your safety goggles <laughs> and you will need a mask to protect yourself. But it's more as a precaution, isn't it? It is more as a precaution and yeah. you need to have gloves on to protect your hands. Okay, so for solution one, mm -hmm. we use the ferric ammonium citrate green. And this is what makes the blue colour. So for my recipe, I use four and a half tablespoons. So it's a great colour. It is a great colour. So four and a half. Now I'll talk to you about the recipes in a minute mm -hmm. when I. Um, have the mask off. Can you hear me okay with the mask on or not so good? I can hear you fine. You can hear yeah, me fine? I can understand you fine. Okay, so we have that one with the first one. So four and a half tablespoons yes. of the... Um, but we'll put the recipe yeah. at the end of the, um, yeah, we'll have the thing so people can read. Absolutely. So we have this one, we'll get that one out of the way. Then we use the oxalic acid. Now I find with this recipe the oxalic makes the blues bluer and the whites whiter. So how much of that done? That is 1.25 grams, which is just like a quarter of a teaspoon. Thank you. I use for that one. Okay. Oxalic acid. Then we have the demineralized water, which is 250 mils. There we go. And we use a mixer. Plastic. Plastic has to be plastic so it doesn't um, mix with the um, the chemicals to cause it oxidization with mm -hmm. the steel. So that's solution one. So that's finished. Now we'll go on to solution two, which is the potassium ferrocyanide. And here we have 1.5 tablespoons. little bit more. Look, I started being exact when I started measuring, but if a little bit more, a little bit less, it's not too stressful. Wait, I just need the oxalic acid oh, back. Yep. Yes, so we need this one back because it goes in this mix as well. 
And it's the same amount, like a quarter of a teaspoon. Mm -hmm. So we can put the obacillae. Yeah. And then we have the ammonium dictramate, and it is just a pinch. It's just the smallest amount, and we throw that in. And that's a stabiliser? It's like that? a stabiliser. It stabilises the whole solution and creates a better finished product, mm -hmm. I have found. And the same again, we have 250 mils of water. And we mix that one. And so you just have to make sure it's all mixed down. And when it's all mixed down, we then put them into our light sensitive containers and you make sure you have equal amounts of each one. Well, they're all, it's going to be equal amounts, but solution one goes in one, mark the label, and label also number two. Okay, so I'll pour those ones in. I'll take this off. And we can put it into our light sensitive container. This one, solution two is always a little bit harder. It takes a bit longer to break down. And when cleaning up, uh, is it best to rinse these out, uh, outside, rinse these off outside, or can you wash them um, in the sink okay, with just um, on their own? On, look, I think you're pretty much okay at home if you've got, because most people will probably use the basic solution, and the basic solution, if you just pass me back those chemicals, I'll yep. just explain that to you, Kay. Is you can actually leave out the oxalic acid and the ammonium dictronate. I find that they work really well for me because I'm using using them on fabric, mm -hmm. and I find I get. And after a lot of research, I found that was the mm -hmm. best thing for me to use. But if you're just making to do it on paper, you know, you just need these two chemicals with water. So you Not just to mineralize water. Yeah, the demineralized water. The sorry. Demineralized. Yeah, so that's all you really need. Mm -hmm. And um, but you can buy kits, and the kits are really good because I think they they range from about thirty five through to about sixty dollars, and you just have those two mm -hmm. ones, and I think you get about two hundred mils. Now two hundred mils will do a lot of paper. Mm -hmm. You know, it goes a very long way. So you don't need you know sometimes. To buy the chemicals, if you're not going to be doing large-scale work, I think you'll be fine just to buy a kit. Okay. And right. I think it's Jacaranda, I think, might be the brand, if, mm -hmm. I'm, if I'm correct. But you can check up on that on the internet. Yeah. Okay. So, what to now what do we do? Well, now we will have to leave this process and we will have to go into the darkroom mm -hmm. and that's where we will start to coat our paper. Great. Okay. See you in the dark room. <laughs> See you in the dark room. Okay. So, Jane, we're back in here. Back we're in the dark room. Yeah, we're, we're here okay. under the tungsten lights mm -hmm. um, because this is where we need to be light sensitive. Mm -hmm. And so once these things here are exposed to light, they start to develop. And so with the tungsten light, that enables it not to be developing. But um, if you're at home, That's you good. could um, just make sure you're in a really dark room, close the blinds, and you could quickly coat it, but then put it in black plastic to dry. Oh, great. Yeah, or in a cupboard. You could hang it in a cupboard with a couple of pegs, close it and let it dry, you know, because mm -hmm. it only takes about 10 minutes for the paper to dry. Okay. Okay. okay, so what we do, we take equal parts of number one and number two. So for this exercise here, we only need a little bit because we've only got two sheets of paper. So we just go here. On. Go part two. So if you use a measuring jug, that is the easiest way to do it. So when it mixes together, it ends up being like a 
like a light purpley sort of color. So to apply, I use the sponge brushes, but you could use any brush that you want. So we just mix it around quite well because you want both the chemicals mixed. So yet again, you still have to make sure that everything is um, wooden or um, plastic, no metal, because otherwise it will start your image to oxidize, which is like over here. This piece of fabric um, has been left too long and it starts to oxidize. So all we do is we start and we just give it a super, super light coat. So we're just going in one direction. Gosh, it's right? really pale. It is very pale, but you will see in a minute. So you want to coat it all in one direction. And then you go the other direction to make sure you have got all of the area covered. Now, if you like, you might only want to do part of an image. So you might just do one strip mm -hmm. and you, you know, you can be creative here and go however you want to go. And we just backwards and forwards. So you do vertical first and then horizontal again. Mm -hmm. And you find you don't need a lot. It's very, very quick. I might leave some bits so we might see where the mm -hmm. image is. And that's basically it. And then we take our two pegs and we just peg it up to dry. You can put fans on it because we're in here, but um, anywhere else. But you can sort of see here, you can see that slight colour change. And, And you'll see as it develops, it will go just a slightly light, light green. And does it have to be completely dry before you expose the image? Um, look, for paper, I find it's better. You will get blurred images if it's not completely dry. Okay. And um, it depends what you're going for. But I find that your negatives will be wrecked if... if the paper no. isn't dry, so you won't get very much use out of it. Much better to be patient and let the paper completely dry. Yes, and let it dry. Mm -hmm. Okay, no worries. See you soon for the next step. Our paper's dry. Yeah, our paper's dry, and so you can see from the paper here yeah. where I've missed little bits. And you know, sometimes that's great. Oh, you know, so good. you. So you'll be able to see yeah, yeah. little bits where you won't get the image. So the image will only actually come on the bit that is like this pale purple. Mm -hmm. And when you're actually not in the room, it is like a really pale, pale green is what mm -hmm. you actually see. So if we look at, now here we're using an ultraviolet light box that we're fortunate to have here at CDU. But at home, what you could actually use is a couple of pieces of Perspex and put it out in the sun, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. you know, if you don't have a light box. And do the exposure times change if you're it will, exposing to light? It will change. Daylight? This, yeah, mm -hmm. it'll have to be in the middle of the day. So you've got a lot of the UV light is what you'll need for that. And um, you just have to, you'll have to practice. You'll, you'll have to do some experiments. I think to see I remember it. from when I, um, years ago when I was doing my undergrad, I think they were looking at an hour sometimes yeah, for some, some, some people will actually leave it out there for the whole day and then right. go and get it at night you oh, know, and okay. actually do it. Yeah, so, oh, you know, it, cool. It, we're just lucky here. We have the light box. We can do it in 32 minutes. It took a lot of trial and hour, error to get the right amount of time, but I found 32 is the right mix for this box. So, right. so all we do is we take our negative, we place it on the glass, and then we place the paper. So it is... It doesn't matter what way or... Not, for, the, not for this one here, yep. but for the text... You have to make sure it's upside down because if you put it the right way up here, uh -huh. when you pull the print off, it will be back to front. So you just make sure it's upside down. And we put this one. Actually, I might put this one here because we might see a little bit of where the image gets left uh -huh. behind on that one. And we'll put this one down. So if you were at home, what I would do is actually have 
a piece of glass. You can use an old photo frame and actually put that down and that's how, and instead of being down, because we've got the light shining up here, outside oh. we have the light, sun shining down, so you would actually have your image up And like you have that. the piece of glass to ensure that the negative doesn't blow away. Yes, that's yeah. what it is, just to okay. keep it stable. Yeah. Okay. okay, so if we do that, and we'll put our timer on for 32 minutes. Okay. We'll just close the lid down, okay? Okay, and next to you there, we just have the vacuum cleaner. If you'd like to put that on, and that just sucks it down to keep everything in space. Place there, and we've got the ultraviolet lights on. Okay, and we've got our timer at 32 minutes, and we'll be back. should be ready underneath here so if we lift it up when we lift it up we can see that it has an exposure that sort of looks like this it sort of starts to look like that oxidized look and we'll just take these out and we'll put them in to the first tray of water which has vinegar to water and what the vinegar does is stop the developing of the actual paper. So we'll just put these in and what we do is just agitate this for about five minutes. So you just need to just slightly move it. Now it's this water bath here has probably about probably about a quarter of a cup of vinegar and that's all you should need. And you can see here through here where I've left some bits and that's where it, it won't actually expose. So it's it's um, it's not a good idea to use a little brush to, uh, to wash or anything? Um, look, I just find this is enough, but, yeah. but most of my work is with fabric, so I actually put it in a bucket and I'm actually quite rough with it in, ah. in the washout process. So with the... Um, but what you're really trying to do is if we look here, we can see bits of here where it's yellow and that is still the actual... Um, oh, I can see, I can be, see very slightly where yeah, it's, where it's a bit yellow. Out. So, but you yeah. don't actually really want to touch it too, yeah. too much because you'll actually bring off the image. That's what I was thinking. You don't want to, you don't want to interfere with the surface yeah. of it. You just want to make the so you can really see. Gentle. So you can see here where yeah. it's, most of it's washed out, where it's still a little bit yellow and greeny colour over there with the girl. Over here, it's sort of the greeny, where it's here, it's starting to wash out. With this image here, you can still see it's quite yellow That's through there. Great. So it usually takes about five minutes of doing this. Yep. And for the purpose of today, though, I'm happy to move it straight to the next bath. Do you want to do that or? So when it, now, then it goes across into this. Image. It goes into this bath, and what this bath has here, it has peroxide, the six percent. And what you'll notice when we put this into there, mm -hmm. it will the blue actually goes to a darker blue and oh. a deeper blue and your whites will become. So if you want me to pop one in there now, are you happy yep. to go yep. with that? Happy so if we go. put it in here, we can see straight away, you can oh see it gosh. start to go darker. It really intensifies, doesn't it? Yeah, and it really changes the whole colour by having the peroxide. So that's and phenomenal. you get that real contrasting and that's where you start to get that really deep indigo blue and that's where the um, oxalic acid and everything and the dichromate, I think, I can't say it properly, but yes, it um, helps to get you that better and processing. And your bath in here to... Uh, so it's stable. usually five minutes yeah. for each one. So five minute rinse, five minute... Um, thing. And then I haven't actually got it here, I have forgotten, we do need another bath after the peroxide bath, but what I will do is I will just empty this one into here and we'll watch it go to the deeper blue again. Mm -hmm. And you can see how the colour just really intensifies. And we'll just put plain water in that one to wash out after that. We can. 
So you can see the real colour intensity. So it does make a difference to have the better peroxide to get that finish that we want. So I recommend that we do five minutes for the first bath of um, the vinegar for the stop for the developing then another five minutes in this bath which we will use for the peroxide and then basically you use the last water bath and it's just plain water and it's really just washing all the chemicals away on this one and then you're finished and then you just would hang it up to dry and your prints are done Okay. They're really beautiful. And so when you hang them up to dry after they've washed for another five minutes, ten minutes? minutes yes, five minutes. So, so five minutes for the first wash mm -hmm. with the vinegar, another five minutes for the peroxide mm -hmm. wash, and then another five minutes here. And then at the end, you just hold your print up and let the water drain off. Mm -hmm. And then just hang it outside to dry. Okay. Or you can, you know, you could lay it flat if you want to, but I tend to just leave it just hang up by just one, one peg, corner. One corner, yeah. one peg, and that's, that's all you need to and do. And it keeps the water running off. Of it, yeah. yeah. Wonderful. And that's Jane, it. that's awesome. Thank no you worries, so very no. much. Thank you. I hope you've all learned something today. <laughs> thank you. Okay, thank you.